Hi, I'm Charlie White, and today I'm going to set the record straight on whether you can silicon over existing silicon. Now, I've seen a lot of people on forums saying, can I silicon over existing silicon? And the answers are pretty mixed. You know, some people say, yes, of course you can. Some people say, of course you can't. You've got to remove all the silicon to do a proper job. Now, my advice on this generally is, where you can, I would remove the existing silicon. Particularly where, like here, you've got mold forming on the silicon. However, if, like me in your bathroom, you've got pretty clean joints like this, where the silicon has actually been piped into a gap between the tile and the shower tray so it's not really that proud of the surface and you can get a bead on top of it pretty well I wouldn't worry too much about removing the silicon. I'm not going to be able to remove the silicon partly because I've got an acrylic shower tray so it's going to damage it if I start scraping away at the silicon but also because the silicon has as I say been piped so well into the joint it's not necessary to remove it. Now, in terms of siliconing onto existing silicon, there's two points to make here. Point one, you don't actually want the silicon to knit onto all three corners of the joint. You only really want about two, three millimetres on the side and then two or three millimetres on the base. This is because if you're using quite a high modulus silicon, i.e. a very rigid inflexible silicon, and your shower tray, bath area, whatever it is you're siliconing, has a lot of movement, then this movement is quite likely to tear the silicon if your silicon is knitted to the internal corner and the two sides of the joint. Provided your new silicon joint has that crucial 2 to 3 meter bond on the side and on the base of whatever you're siliconing to, if it hasn't bonded to the silicon in the middle it's doing you a bit of a favour because it's less likely to tear should you have a bit of flexibility in your joints. But if you want your joint to work as I've just suggested, make sure you tool a diagonal profile on your silicon bead using one of these Fuji profiling tools or similar. If you're siliconing over existing silicon and using your finger or some other concave profile tool, you will not get the same strength as you would if you used the diagonal profile on the profiling tool. For more information on why that is the case, take a look at the video I did last week, How to Silicon the Complete Pro Guide. But a little bit of advice for you here. If you want to do something and you can't find any examples on forums about whether it works or it doesn't, try it out for yourself. See what happens. Here's what I mean. So I was intrigued to know whether you can silicon onto existing silicon. So that's exactly what I've done here. As you can see now, here the silicon is dried onto the existing silicon and I'm now going to try and remove it so that I can show you how well it's adhered. And as you can see, we've got a really good bond there. The existing silicon bead here has been in the shower for about a year and a half. I haven't really degreased this particularly well, I've just given it a quick clean, and I cannot scrape off the new silicon from that existing silicon bead. So, for those of you out there who want to know whether you can or can't silicon, try it out yourself, and in my case, the answer is a pretty categorical yes, you can. Before I finish, remember the one golden rule when you're siliconing over existing silicon. Make sure you clean away all the residual soap detergent from the surfaces that you're siliconing onto. Soap is the enemy of silicon. If you watched my previous video last week, you'll know that I never use a water and detergent spray when I'm siliconing for this very reason. When you've given the joint a good clean, I really recommend using something like methylated spirits as a degreasing agent before you apply your new bead of silicon. So that's enough of my boring chat. Take a look now at how I got on using this brilliant Fuji kit, siliconing over the existing silicon in my shower.
So I really hope you found this video useful. Remember, if you can't find the answer to what you're trying to do online, try it out for yourself at home on a mock-up or whatever. Ultimately, you are the person that holds the key to the success of your DIY project. Oh, and buy yourself one of these if you're going to do some siliconing because they're absolutely awesome. If you like what you've seen, please click on the like button below and if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.